Hi everyone and welcome to Football Therapist for the second episode of the Red Bull Football series in which I'm going to explain in detail the Red Bull Salzburg model, uh, in particular describing their scouting process to, to sign the players as well as, uh, as, well as the coaches who, who match their game identity. I'm also going to speak about the adaptation of young foreign uh, players but discovering all this will make a lot of a lot more more sense for you if you first watch my my last video where I explained the uh, the role in 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 the history of the different Red Bull football clubs. I indeed uh, explained the the importance uh, Ralph Rangnick has had in Red Bull's success within the football world, uh, and in particular the, the success he brought to Leipzig and to Red Bull Salzburg. And this club I've just mentioned is precisely today's video topic. Um, so I need to briefly remind you the, the club model whose origin has been explained in a previous episode. Red Bull Salzburg's model is basically to stay Austria's best team uh, while selling as many young players uh, as possible at a good price. There, there is therefore a, a constant flow of players uh, in the first team because the porters means, uh, mean, means arrivals for, of, 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 of other young players, very young players even, who can arrive through a transfer from another club directly to the first team, like those of Okafor, Weber, Gulakshi, Kampel, Ulma, Piatkowski, Holland. But most of the time, uh, the club promotes players from its academy because, uh, as already explained in the last video, the adaptation of home ground players in the first team is facilitated by the presence of the same playing style within all the teams at the club. And these youngsters, uh, these youngsters who join the first team have going through one of the four following ways I'm now going to present to you. The first one uh, concerns players for, uh, who are from the region uh, around Salzburg and who usually join the club between the U7 and the U13. As Salzburg is located very near the, front the frontier with, uh, German uh, with Germany, players from the region living on the German side of the border also have the, the right to play for the, the Austrian club uh, because uh, a certain a certain perimeter is determined, in fact. Some of these local players that have been through uh, Salzburg's academy are Martin Interegger, Stefan Ilsanke, Stefan Leimer, uh, Stefan Leiner, Konrad Leimer, Mergin Berisha and, and Nicolas Seiwald, uh, between others. Then, all the other players uh, living in Austria have the right to join the academy from the age of 14 and the majority of these players um, will then live at the academy. Not notable players that have followed, uh, followed this path uh, are Xaver Schlager, Hannes Wolf, Adamu, Amadedic, as well as Sucic and Chaleta and Cha, who both play for Croatia's national team, even if they are, uh, if they were living in Austria when they joined the, the academy. The third possible way concerns players uh, coming from other European countries that have the right to join the club from the age of 16. Here we can mention the likes of Chobotschlai, Upamecano and Cesco. In addition to this last, to this last player, other young players currently at the club uh, who are very promising are Oko, Kiergaard or Simic. What stands out here uh, is that none of these players uh, comes from, from a country like England, Spain, Portugal or even Italy that surely are the best when it comes to, to producing young talents. The thing is, Salzburg doesn't even really scout there because the, the players are already well supervised by local professional clubs and these generally all also have an, an attracting academy that offer uh, way bigger wages to, to convince the, these promising uh, players to, to join. 
In fact, uh, some of the, the players uh, are already millionaire in U18, for, for instance. And this, this is something Salzburg isn't ready to, to offer as, as long as these players are not established, is established at, at a professional level. That is why they don't try to, to compete with the big clubs of the countries uh, mentioned before for, I mentioned before for, for these players. However, Salzburg don't put their focus uh, only on the countries with an interesting championship without uh, these kind of big clubs, like the, the Eastern or, or Northern countries leagues. Since there, there is also an, in, an interest for young German players like Adeyemi. Just like for Switzerland, uh, which, which is also attentively observed, we can think that the club uh, looks in these two countries for German-speaking players who, in all probability, won't have adaptation problems. But there is still a, a very interesting case, which is the one of France. Because it, even if there are big clubs there, um, there are almost too many talented players in the whole country, which means these can't all have a spot at PSG or in Lyon, for, for example. Therefore, we have... Upa Meccano who joins the academy, but we shouldn't for, uh, forget that Sadio Mane and Nabi Keita were about 19 years old when they directly joined Salzburg's first team from France's second division. We can say um, Salzburg uh, had good eyes in these cases when we look where these three players are nowadays, and <coughs> currently there also is an interesting uh, French player in in the first team, in, in central, the, in the defender Umar Sole, with, which really, who, 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 who is actually very good at breaking uh, the, the opponent lines uh, uh, with, with some laser, laser passes. Um, I, I, I really like him a lot uh, in, in this field. This shows that, that France is is a country that is still very familiar for them, actually. And the last possible way concerns uh, above all players from other continents because they, they can join the academy since the age of uh, 18 if they don't directly join the first team. There have therefore been different Asian players who played for Salzburg like Minamino, Huang Hichen and Okugawa as well as players from America, either from North, like Ranson, or from the South, like Capaldo, as well as Romario and Coronel, the two players from the, the Brazilian Red Bull Club I presented in my last video. But what, what, but what we really stands out, though, is the success the club has had recruiting youngsters from, um, uh, from Africa. One has to know uh, they have they've had an, an academy in Ghana. They sold, but they still kept a, a preferential right to purchase on on players from this academy, which shows they, they are still keeping an eye on, on players there, as well as in, as in Zambia, where Mwepu and Daka are from two two players that who made the jump to 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 the Premier League from from Austria last summer. Um, but what? But they both also have something else in, in common, the fact that former Malian footballer uh, Frédéric Canute is their agent. And this same Canute also owns uh, an academy named um, Yelens Olympique in his country, where promising midfielder Usman Diakite is from. In fact, these players just come back to, to Salzburg after a lone spell at St. Gallen in Switzerland, where he truly shined. But Salzburg also has other partners in Bamako and in Mali, uh, a proof being the, the quantity of million players who went through uh, the club. Some of them are Samaseku, Haidara, Koita and, and now Kamara, who, who also deserves to, to play in the Premier League like his ex-teammates. Obviously, between all, between all the players I've mentioned for all these different possible ways, some of them directly joined the first team from another club, but the huge majority did go through the academy, and most of the time, they join as soon as the law allows it on a, on an age level. 
this not only enables to to avoid another club from from signing the player in question, uh, since this same player since this same player uh, also gets the possibility to learn the Red Bull style of football as soon as possible, and this in a place where he won't have any other choice than than giving his 100% uh, to shine on the pitch because of the competition there is uh, since the since the youth team's squads are among the best in Europe there, as often em- embodied by the, the club's journey in youth league, the, the U18, U19 Champions League they, they precisely won in 2017. As Salzburg uh, wants to watch the players they find interesting several times, the foreign European players who can join, uh, who can sign up from from 16 years old, has therefore already been scouted since he was uh, 14, 15 years of age, with the youth national teams being watched uh, in the first place. This generally start at the U15 level and. It really is practical to watch them since their coaching, since their coaching staff members all already make a selection of the best best players uh, in the country. Meaning uh, Salzburg then only needs to e- examine what, who can to examine who can fit their, their their playing style. And this allows me to briefly remind you what the Red Bull identity is on the pitch. Um, I would say it is the desire, the willingness to to recover the ball, especially directly after losing it, in order to go as quickly as possible towards the open end goal, and this whatever the score the score might be. And I've just chosen the the words willingness and, and desire on on purpose um, because this give it all mentality really is a requirement that needs to be fulfilled in order to sign for Salzburg. The club doesn't uh, sign a player if, the, if they are not convinced uh, by the person, in fact. The same mentality can be detected by the, by the scouts when looking at the effort uh, level the, the players put in on the pitch, uh, with their concentration also being closely looked at. One has to know that when it is, when it is possible, which is not the case at a very early age, the scouts first watch numerous uh, matches from their office with the computer. They won't sign in any player without observing him uh, in a stadium before, since this en- enables them to, to pay attention to other details. Is the player involved uh, focused during the warm-up? Is it also the case once the ball is not in, in play after having been sent outside of the field? These are good indicators whether the player in question has the Red Bull mentality or not. Now, well, this concentration obviously has, obviously has to, to be used above all in the game. Players, The player needs to have uh, a good scanning ability in order to, to then quickly take the right de- decision. The behavior when the team loses and recovers the ball is especially looked closely at since the Red Bull game identity is based around gegen pressing, counter pressing. The ability to win duels is therefore also important as well as the actions, the actions speed of execution. More generally, uh, speed is a required uh, quality the club uh, can find out about through their very developed database that that shows if if the interesting players or uh, if the if the interesting players' athletic abilities are, are sufficient or not to play at Salzburg. But this big data also allows to to look for the players who best fulfill uh, the physical requirements to to join the club. Which means this database part can happen or, or before or after the, the more traditional scouting part. However, depending on how uh, a football match is being played, not every player will have the chance to, to show his athletic qualities in terms of running. Um, that is why players who went through the different technical uh, tactical filters I mentioned before have to complete a fitness test before an eventual signing in, in addition to some psychological tests. And when this possible uh, transfer concerns uh, an academy team, 
player in question normally spends a few days training with what might become his his next squad, and different sorts of body measure, measurements are also being made uh, at this moment, particularly to to compare them with these uh, of the players per rents as. Uh, as this can indicate how the physical growth and development is going to evolve. His body me measurements take place regularly for the, for the academy players with the, with the rest circumference as, as good, being a, a good indicator on, on how advanced his, his, grow, his growth is, uh, which enables to, to better estimate one's potential. In fact, uh, a player that would have developmental delays should not even be directly sent out of the academy at all costs, because in a year, in a year of two or two, um, he could precisely be the quickest player to, uh, to go in behind the, the opponent defense, or he might become an an aerial duels machine, etc. Some players also gain in self-confidence when they see their body uh, is more is becoming more imposing, and conversely, those who had an, an early physical development or, or growth and were maybe the best of their squad with 13 years old might lose uh, this supremacy over time. This kind of tests allow um, allows therefore to reduce the margin of errors when it comes to deciding on which players the club should count on in the future. To show this attention to detail culture the, there is at Salzburg, I also must mention that even if it never actually happened, there was the desire to have genetical tests there because it is a great indicator of, um, of, potential, of potential injuries. What's the probability um, the player gets injured? What type of injury of injury would it therefore be? All these questions could be answered more easily. Also at the academy, uh, the player's evolution is not followed uh, is not followed uh, closely only from a physical point of view, though. First of all, the players have to behave. Exemplarily, and this also includes the, the time spent uh, at school, where if they if the if they uh, if there are problems, they risk uh, missing the the match of the weekend. In addition to these players, have regular individual discussions with their coaches, so these can these can show them video sequences, enabling them to improve certain aspects of the, of their game. Nevertheless, if the player does does be does perform perform below expectations. Salzburg will have to look for a club where he can have minutes on on loan, which the club uh, does very seriously, knowing that the player will still be closely followed on at his new club before coming back home or or signing elsewhere later on. More generally. Salzburg do, do everything possible for their teams to, to function uh, optimally, especially by also having a, a scouting process for academy coaches with, uh, with criteria being obviously the style of play and, and the mentality, which can be noticed by a strong desire to learn even more um, about the game. Because once in, uh, once in place, uh, the coaches from different teams uh, meet uh, on, a, on a regular basis, especially to share the different ideas they put into practice within their team. And every manager also follows uh, another coach's training session regularly um, in order to get or to suggest new ideas later on, should the de deficiency be, be detected. Almost uh, every coach ex coaching staff couldn't be up here since most of the team's matches and training sessions are filmed and tracked from a, a statistical point of view, which really fa facil facilitates the, the analysis of aspects that need to be worked on. A position analysis also happened to, to take place very early, uh, very, very, early, very early in the youth teams. Academy coaches have therefore everything they need to improve themselves and to do a good job. 
The proof being the following list of a few coaches who went through the youth team before managing a, at a professional level. We have Peter Zeidler, Gerhard Strub, Gerhard Struber, Bo Svensson, Jaisle, but the most popular um, is surely Ma Marco Rose um, and his assistant René Marich. With that being said, uh, Red Bull Salzburg also had an administrative advantage in FC Liefering, the new name of the other club. They bought in the in the city of Mozart in 2012. Since at the time, uh, the, Austra, um, uh, the, the Austrian Federation didn't allow to, to have a B team, a reserve team, higher than in the, in the third division. What's always been authorized, though, is the concept of so-called cooperation players. These have to be younger than uh, 22 years old and unannounced, uh, unannounced to, the, to the Federation. They have the, the right to play not only for the cooperative club, uh, being here at Liefering, but also for the parent club, uh, Red Bull Salzburg. And this was the first team, or with the, U uh, with the U18 if this age limit is not yet too high. With the system, it is much easier to get some playing time, meaning one can join the first team earlier. It is just forbidden to play for more than one <laughs> than one team uh, uh, than one team's the, the same weekend. And reaching the first team to to play European competitions is precisely what motivates a, a young player to to sign for the club, since it surely isn't money. Uh, at the academy, wages approximate uh, 500 euros, if any, while salaries at Levering reach um, 2,000 or 3,000 euros, even if we are talking about Salzburg's reserve team here and not an average one. Even though the club uh, wants players who have as priority the football project, it is still really hard to join the club as a foreign player, um, and this even if the different requirements are, are fulfilled. In fact, since Salzburg uh, make, make sure every foreign player integrates very well by orga organizing German lessons for them, showing them the city, looking for an apartment once they leave the academy, the spots for foreign players in the first team are consequently quite limited because they they depend on the disponibility of these employees in in charge of, of this integration program. Now, you're surely thinking there is not anything else to, to add on the success secrets of, uh, of the Red Bull Salzburg model, which you actually shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I still need to talk about the innovative um, training methods uh, present at the Red Bull Academy. However, this will be the topic of a future video, since I'm going to speak more generally about the technologies that improve football training, whether individually or collectively. That is why um, I invite you to subscribe to, to my channel if you don't want to miss this, uh, without forgetting to follow me on Instagram and on Twitter as well. If you've enjoyed this video, you can drop me a like, let me know it in, in the comment section and share the video with your football fellows. Bye. <coughs>